All right, Drizzy, it's coming in in a second. Sounds good. Here we go. What number is it? This would be 105. Are you got chicken lifts right now? Let's fucking go, boys. <laughs> Marshall Blockland's fans, this is the 105th episode of the podcast, and uh, today we got another special guest with you, but or with us, but uh, before I intro him, I got to take a second to shit on Kluver, because when I was trying to set this episode up, Kluver told me uh, that I was not taking into account his time or his feelings uh, when putting up the guests, and I needed to take him into more consideration. And here's how I'm going to put this is that if I wanted to be nagged at, like I was nagged, nagged at by a girlfriend, I'd have one, but I need a girlfriend. Like I need a bullet in the head. So I don't need to hear Kluver tell me that I wasn't taking his feelings into account when uh, putting content out for you guys. So, uh, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to be done shitting on Kluver. And now I'm just going to bring in our guy, uh, man, a lot could be said. First of all, he's, a, he's, he, he's the only running back that I've ever played with who had bigger biceps than me, no doubt. <laughs> Maybe JB, but his were still bigger than JB's. I don't even know, man. We had so many good times in the running back room. This guy's been through some shit with me. Great career at Iowa, great football career. Great dude, LaShawn. Welcome to the podcast, man. Yeah, well, thank, thank you for having me. What's going yeah, on, man? On, boys. Uh, not much, you know, just vibing. Excited to be on the podcast for once. How you uh how how you handling all this uh this pandemic shit? Bro, it's terrible, bro. Like I literally can't do nothing. Can't watch no sports, bro. Can't go out to eat. Can't even walk down to the store just to go like walk around the mall or something. Like I'm literally just stuck in the house just trying to play video games, whatever <laughs> I can do. Like trying to keep my mind off just sitting off my butt doing nothing. Yeah, yeah. I we we just said before we clicked record. Uh, that you and James, which fans, we tried to get James on. We tried to have the brothers on the podcast. It would have been, well, we had, we had the diesels. This would have been the second time we had two brothers on the podcast, but uh, James is playing FIFA, man. What'd you say, Drake? Found a way to be busy. Yeah. Um, and speaking of busy, before we get to you, LaShawn, I want to answer Drake on his call out in the beginning, because this happens a lot. First of all, there's a lot to talk. There's so much to talk about. Kevin, for those subscribed on Patreon or watching a week later, is devouring some Pete and Kim Harmon chicken lips from Gray's. I know Sean. Shout out to Gray's, the the first sponsor, unofficial sponsor of Wash Welcome's podcast. I, and I, I got to be honest, Kevin, those look so goddamn good. Yeah, bro. They also look fire, bro. So we're going to sidestep here real quick. This is the first time I have chicken lips in a while. And you know what? I decided, you know what? Pandemic. Restaurants are closed. You got to find a way to support local businesses. Gray's is running an awesome deal. 12 chicken lips for 25 bucks. Holy shit. You bet your ass I'm taking full advantage of that. So this is going to be like <laughs> my next three meals. Just I was going to say, that's, that's three meals of chicken lips for sure. If yeah. you're greedy. Oh, yeah. And you know I'm greedy. Yeah. So yeah. shout out Grace. <laughs> shout out your local restaurants. Go support. Yeah. Go go hit up Keaton Kim and and support the the Grays and everybody else out there. Mm. Side story. Guy called when I called. I don't know. Recognized my voice or something. He's like, "Is this Kevin Ward of the Washed Up Walker?" I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's him." He said, "As soon as we come out with the 2020 Wrestling National Champions, 
he wants five shirts. So we got to get those out to the people. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, all right. We're going to get, again, we're going to get to you, LaShawn. First of all, Kevin, the, the chicken lips look insane. Your mustache, other. Also insane. Pretty. Other opinions about it. Um, Thanks, Drake. Thank you, Drake. I don't like it. I, the only time I liked it is when you, Josie, and Bo all had one together and you looked like some mobsters from the 30s or something like that. I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, anyway. Hey, Bottle me, Kluger. Let's see what you got. Yeah. So, so we sat down, you know, LaShawn, Drake texted you earlier in the day trying to set this podcast up. Mm -hmm. uh, we had been talking. Um, unfortunate circumstance uh, in my personal life where I'm going to be gone this weekend. Um, generally we record on Sundays, um, with this pandemic, it's been a little different, but generally we record, we record on Sundays and I did not know if I was going to be available this Sunday. So in my head, looking out for the fans, looking out for y'all, I was like, Hey, we got to get at least one episode, an extra episode recorded during this week. So that Monday for next week, we could have an episode. Then we'll figure out Thursday's episode for next week. Once the week starts. So I got it figured out. So, well, okay. A little bit different side of the story though. Drake goes, and when I told Drake this, cause I know Kevin's busy. Kevin's, as he told us on the last episode, he's a responsible adult that has long-term plans and goals. Unlike Drake and I, <laughs> <laughs> I told Drake tomorrow we have to get an episode in. All right. I read tonight. There have been multiple accounts where Kevin and I both have said, Drake, you schedule episodes without <laughs> us telling you that we're available. Drake texts back, all right, cool. I'll hit up LaShawn and James for tomorrow, yada, yada. I'm like, awesome, sick. Thursday, middle of the day, we can hit an episode, no big deal. Drake texts us 90 <laughs> minutes ago and says, hey, we got LaShawn for tonight. Um... It was more like two hours ago. <laughs> Whatever. Hey, we got LaShawn for tonight. Uh, something, something. And I'm like, dude, and, and you mentioned not having a girlfriend. You don't want one. You don't want to be nagged at. It brings me to this point. Yes, we're in the middle of a pandemic. I've spent the last 14, 20 days with my wife. I get that I've seen her and I will see her and I will get time with her. The problem is, is that sometimes... It's not like 100% of the time I'm sitting there like, I wish I was doing a Washoe podcast, podcast right now. Like sometimes I just want to hang with the wife, you know? And tonight was one of those times. Now, I'm okay. It's all good. You, you said I'm not Crystal Lee on Twitter. It's all good, babies. I'm right here. But and the thing is, you're going to dump for 30 minutes anyways. So, oh, and that's another story, but um, we don't want to hear that one. But nope. clearly, man, nope. we're, we're in a <laughs> national shutdown, everyone's quarantined, sheltered in place. She can't leave you, even she, she tried, it's illegal. She yeah. can't leave the house. It's very true. It's, it's not illegal to leave your house, okay? Okay, LaShawn, you got a wife, you've got a baby too. What's right, your take right. on all this? Uh, yeah, I mean, I LaShawn, where he's LaShawn <laughs> back me up, yeah. bro. I, I understand where he's coming from. I mean, you, you try to spend time because, like. Because whenever all this eventually ends, like, you can go back to seeing them only for a few hours during the day. So you got to kind of, you know, you got to make the time, right? You got to have, got to be a family man. Got to be a grown up, something yeah, yeah. like that. All right. And, and so. your, your wife's name is also Lauren. Mine is named Lauren as well. Say, right. for example, you and Lauren and the baby had a nice little night planned. You're going to watch a TV show, sit down, eat a meal together. And then all of a sudden, James texts you and goes, yo, LaShawn, we're playing FIFA tonight. It's just what, <laughs> it's just what's, it's just it's what's happening. the same at all. We're playing yeah. FIFA and that's what's happening. All right. You don't get to, you know, tell, tell Lauren and the baby you're playing FIFA for now. You don't have a baby. <laughs> LaShawn has the ultimate trump card. Your situation is not the same at all. You literally just have a girlfriend with a ring on her finger. That's it, bro. Wow. You don't have a family. Wow. Yet. You just wow. have the woman. So, like, you can't fall back on that Trump card. We're in a quarantine. I win. Just the, okay. I want Walk On's fans this thing right now to destroy Drake for saying that I just have the woman. That's it. Okay. That's it. You, the, the, see, the, LaShawn has the extra piece to the puzzle that she can pile on him. So, until you have a kid, fuck your wife. It's just like, no, 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 don't no, no. Spend time no, no, no. 
No, 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 I no. I think no, that's no. how it works, Clipper. I think that's how it works. Until you have a kid, you fuck your wife. Not, yeah, that, not yeah, literally, that's figuratively. That's true, Thank you for that. Thank you for that. <laughs> now, also, we're in very, very uh, unique circumstances where you just admitted you'd been in the house for 20 days with only your wife. You don't have to worry about a kid. You've spent plenty of good one hour periods. We got we had to get a little business done. We got some business done. Here we are, man. Hey, and look look at where I am. I, look at where I, we are, bro. Here I sit. I told you I'm cool. I'm I cool. Won. But I won. <laughs> I guess if that's how this works. LaShawn, <laughs> let's get to you. You know, I, I just gotta say it always astonishes me how we spend the first fifteen to twenty minutes of every podcast just talking about complete nonsense. <laughs> Yeah, and the fans fucking hate us for it. <laughs> LaShawn, we mentioned uh, maybe we'll go in a different little chronological order. Um, we're going to go through your football career, but we mentioned that you, you got the wife, you got the kid. Um, talk about the last couple years since football um, yeah. and, kind of, and, and kind of how adult life has been trying to figure out what to do after the game has ended. Right, right, right. So, as the last time I played football would have been, what is this, fall 2018, when I was with the Packers for a little bit during their training camp. And uh, so the wife was already pregnant at this time. She was slated to be due in November. Okay. And, you know, so, like, I'm still training and whatnot at this point in time, like, because obviously, like, you never know, like, that, sure. business, that business part, right? NFL's business, you never know where you could be anywhere across the country, wherever. So, boom. So, then you get to a point, baby happens, right? And now, like, now things are, like, getting – time is getting a lot more crunched now because, like, now I'm like, okay, I can't just be working out all the time. Like, I got to get a job at some point. I got to provide, got to help out the family because, obviously, she's not going to be working because I obviously take care of the baby. And, like, I can't just be, you know, shacking off oh, and doing yeah. whatever, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so, like, I mean, I kept training for, like, I guess I want to say, like, over the next – eight-ish months and uh i mean still now i still train every now and again pretty much mainly every day you still got bigger oh. biceps than drake Fact, Way big. Fact. um <laughs> that, that <will> never <laughs> and so like we moved to um so we live just outside of north, north uh, chicago uh north suburbs and uh faith was up here and he like he knew that i lived up here and uh he works at this place called illinois bone joint joint it was basically like a physical therapy, like personal training spot. And face like, hey, man, like, hey, if you want to come and, you know, work here, like, you can train people, like, almost like you're being like a coach, like strength coach. Uh, and you can well, work out here as well. Like, you know, we love to have you on. And so that's something I've really been, that I've been doing really over the past, was it nine-ish months now? Nice. So I've been working as, you know, a uh, personal trainer and like as a, almost like a growth, uh mini strength coach because yeah. I've been working with like different types of athletes whether it be at high schools that are nearby or like uh traveling baseball teams and whatnot and so that's been like a real good time for me you know just being around like camaraderie of guys right because mm -hmm. that's the like, one thing that that I missed about playing football is just always being around you know guys that just enjoy being around each other and getting work done Yep, hundred percent, man. Just grind. Now you said mini strength coach. I don't know how many. You're like, still like one of the biggest dudes I've ever seen in my entire life. Man. <laughs> Hey, I appreciate that, Kevin. Bro, you, bro, Kevin, you you more shredded than me though, low key. Nah, you man, you straight up lying have about that, seen, dude. Have you seen Kluver lately? He's in the best shape of all three of us. Yeah, yeah, Kluver's ripped, bro. He posted that pic. What was that? Like, it was like a month ago or something. Off your like progress of I you going from chunky boy to uh, skinny. Brother, <laughs> brother, we uh, we look. A, I look a little different than the last time I saw you in person. Um, <laughs> let's see, you would have. We miss Fat Kluver. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, Fat Kluver was cooler. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's good to hear you're you're doing well though, Sean. Um, we got to get Faith on the podcast too, man. I I follow him on uh, on Snapchat. Um, yeah. On the gram, and I see him training all all the kids. He's uh, like, Faith is just the Black Doyle now. Yeah, really. He, he's he's literally the superstar. Like <laughs> everyone that comes in, they always they're always trying to train with Faith. Faith always has new people in training with them. Like it's crazy. Yeah. Like. Like Who doesn't really want to hang out with Faith, though? You know what I'm True. saying? True. Funny dude. Uh, soft dude. Funny. Soft. Funny and soft. soft. <laughs> but <laughs> but no, nah, no. Nah, nah, he does a, he does a great job with all the kids he's training. And 
you know, doing his thing. Thinks he can still hoop, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, he be trying to hoop. He be trying to hoop. I mean, his shot's still kind of there, but not really. <sighs> Man, I, Faith always talked the biggest game when it came to basketball. Yeah, like, dude. Like, I, I, like, there were some dudes that had, like, D1 offers, but Faith would be like, oh, man, no, like, I, 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 I got you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Without a doubt, man. Hilarious. Without a doubt. All right, so let's, uh, let's bring it back a little bit. Circa 2011, 2012, LaShawn Daniels out of Ohio, a prospect. Uh, in Ohio, they, they, they grow them pretty strong there in the football community. Yeah. Y'all are known for some football and LeBron. Um, and, and your genetics and, and lineage, your dad, first of all, is a diesel. Okay. Right. Yeah. I mean, he's absolute monster. <laughs> he's a fucking 18 wheeler of a human, man. That yeah. dude's massive. Your dad's yeah. a Mack truck and <clears throat> he played at Ohio state, right? The Ohio state. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So right. I, I want to hear a little <laughs> bit about you growing up. I, I got to imagine I'm sure we've talked about this at some point, but I got to imagine that playing for the Buckeyes was the dream. Um, talk about when that became more of a reality and then, um, you know, where Iowa came to the picture and, and how you ended up in Iowa City. Yeah, yeah. So growing up, it was all about the Buckeyes. Like it was literally Saturdays. It was guaranteed we we're going to be in front of the TV. We we're going to be watching Ohio State. There's there was, there was nothing else. It was all about the Buckeyes. Um, especially because both my parents went there. So my dad and my mom went there. And obviously growing up in Ohio, that's all, that's all people really care about. Like, I mean, you have the Browns, you have the Cavs, you like, you have all these other teams, but no one really cares. They're, they're all focused on Ohio State. That's all, that's all it was growing no up. One's, no one's watching the Akron Zips? No. <laughs> no. No one's on Dayton Flyers. No one, fuck no one cares Dayton, about Dayton. Time. <laughs> no one cares. Fuck Dayton. Yeah, extra so, fuck Dayton these days, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They wilding on Twitter, bro. Yeah. I see that. I see that going through my feet. I just be like, right, right. Let's keep scrolling. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah. So growing up, it's all about Ohio State, and that was really, that's honestly, like, really where I wanted to go. Right. Like, like growing up, I was always like vision myself, like, and Ohio State stuff. Like, I'd always throw my dad's Ohio State helmet, run, run around stuff. Like, we've been to hundreds of games, all this stuff, right? And then you know, you get to high school. And like you, like not everyone, like everyone thinks that they're gonna be play college football. But then there's, there's always those couple of kids that you know, like that, that are different, right? You always have those guys that are different, whether it be at your school or in your area, where like okay, they kind of have a chance. And like I was one of those guys. Like, like colleges would come in and you know talk to me a little bit. Um, but I didn't get my first offer, Division One offer, until uh, my junior year, and it was from Akron. Which was which was Let's cool. Let's go, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just cool. But they, like, like, yeah, you start somewhere, right? But I mean, they like, like, they offered, but they was like, hey, like, we're not really anticipating you coming, coming, coming here. But hey, offers on the table, right? Okay. And you know, I was really only getting interest from from small schools like Mac schools. Um, that was really like where all like all of my recruiting focus was um, when I was a junior, and the only. Uh, power five school that uh, offered me was Boston College and I ended up committing there I want to say June going into my senior season so I was like I enjoyed their campus like they got a surprisingly a nice campus there's a lot, a lot of hills though you got to walk a lot kind of like Iowa City unfortunately um, but yeah they had a nice nice facility you know cool coaches you know like I enjoyed like I enjoyed my time there uh, obviously Boston College is a really good academic school um, you gotta be a pretty smart guy to go into there, regardless if you're playing football or not. Um, but yeah, I was with them, and they're and they obviously they they they're not really that great a football program, right? Like, to be honest, they're not that. They're, yeah, they're, they're, not, mean, they're not. They're not. They're not. They're not. They're anyone not. Anyone out. Anyone playing, outside of right? Clemson in the ACC is quite honestly trash. Right. 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 Like you're not. Like you're not looking at Boston College. Like, oh yeah, like that's that's a school. Like, like yeah. I'm really like trying to go to. Right. Right. So. So yeah, I was committed to them for a while, like uh, summer of my senior season, senior season all the way through. Um, the senior season ends, and like, because they were like really bad. I want to say they might have been, they were probably worse than Iowa was that 2012 season, I think, or Oof, just as bad. That was bad. Yeah. Yeah. That, was, yeah. that was a rough right, season. Right, right. <laughs> Four and eight, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, 
So like they had coaching changes, right? So like open up my, my recruitment just naturally, just because when you have coaches, you don't know if they're going to want you or your brain staff yeah. in or whatever. So, uh, so like a few weeks after that, like coach Brian comes down to, to the school because he's doing his rounds. Cause he used to recruit Ohio. So he's doing his rounds and you know, he's, he's talking to me, talking to me and my brother a little bit and really ends up focusing on me. Um, and he's like, Hey, like, I don't know if we're going to offer you like, yet. I mean, I've seen your film. I've watched your film and I like it a lot. Uh, but you know, I've got to get, get it to the head man, whatever. And, you know, we'll see, we'll see what he says. Right. So, and like a few days go by and it's like, like 1130 at night, like my time, like I get a call from like, like a restricted number or something. I'm like, Who's like I, I honestly wasn't even going to answer the phone. I was legitimately like, bro, it's probably somebody just like trying to prank call me or whatever. What's and with so I, calling restricted numbers? By yeah, the way. yeah, yeah, it's crazy, right? So then I, so I was like, all right, you know, I'm just pick it up, pick it up. And he's like, hello, is this is Sean. And it's like, you know, he does a little KF voice or whatever. I'm like, <laughs> oh, <"Shut> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, this is Kurt, this is a uh, close parent of University of Iowa. And then you know he's telling this talk, and, and then long story short, he's just like. Hey, we're gonna offer you a scholarship, and we'd love to have you got have you come out on the visit. And like at this time, I'm like I'm hyped. I'm like, oh, like like let's fucking go. Like like first Big Ten offer. Like like this is huge, right? So then I'm yeah. like going around the house, like waking everybody up. Like oh, like <laughs> Iowa just offered me. Whatever, blah, blah, blah. Man, I still at this time I really didn't even know much about Iowa. Yeah. Like like I had no idea like really like what was in Iowa. Like who was like superstar players there. The only person that I knew of when like growing up like from Iowa was. Uh, Sean Green, which sure. obviously was a beast, and uh, DJK. And the only reason why I knew that is because he's from Youngstown, yep. which is like 20 minutes from Warren, Ohio. So, yeah, so going around, you know, like, right up, like oh, like, like, let's go, like, this is live, like, boom. So then, you know, I go take my trip, and, and like, it was like a big recruiting weekend, because, like, because obviously, because they didn't go to a bowl game that year, mm-hmm. um, uh, like, so all the coaches were there, and uh, all the players were there and whatnot because they were like doing their workouts and stuff like that. And so it's just like a group, big group of guys that I think I want to say like most of the guys like end up coming like committing there uh, to that visit. Um, I was like I got to find the picture, but it's like a whole bunch of us. I know for a fact it was uh, Meerkat and uh, DP were for sure on that visit. DP, DP, baby. <laughs> DP. That's one of the tr- the the truest legends, man. Dude, yeah. Dude, Love DP, bro. Dude, dude, bro, bro, quick, sto- quick story about DP, man. Our freshman year, 2013, before we got we, – we had that weird, like, first couple days in camp where we got moved in with a freshman roommate, and then we got changed up, like, two or three days later. Yeah, but no, it was because, like, the freshman went to camp two days before everyone else, yeah. and then when, mm-hmm. when everyone else came, you got paired with your older guy. So guess who's DP's roommate night one? <laughs> Your boy. <laughs> and guess who talks on the phone till one in the morning? <laughs> Not your boy. <laughs> Dude, I'm trying to sleep and DP's on the phone all night. I need, we need to get him on the podcast somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Got to, uh, bro. He's so funny, bro. Hey, do you ever find his belt? No. Stick <laughs> <laughs> now. Oh, man. Can it go now? Anyway, so so you commit. Yeah, so so I ended up committing. Um, had a great time on my official visit. Funny story on my official visit. Uh, Hitch was actually my host that night, okay. and you know we're going around. You know, you know, you go to the bars and whatnot. You take me around. Absolutely. Literally, like halfway through the night, like I couldn't even find him, bro. <laughs> I literally couldn't find Hitch, bro. I like asking dudes around, like, "Hey, bro, like, bro, Hitch go, like, bro, you supposed to be my host, bro. You supposed to be like bringing me back to like the hotel and not." And, and like, bro, I, 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 like, I don't know where you went. Oh, you left. I was like, "Bro, what?" <laughs> and then I think I was like with like uh, Reese Fleming at the time and DP. Like, we were, like, like, I found those two, bro. And Reese was like, I, I, "Don't worry, bro. I'll take you back to the hotel and not, bro." But. I had a great time on the visit. So yeah, committed here, committed to I <laughs> committed to Iowa. Um yeah, and you know, really the rest of the So that would have been we'll like that more. would have been like the winter after your senior football season. Yeah, so that was like mm, I wanna say this might have been oh, early January maybe. Okay. Might have been early January, late December ish okay. time around. 
I'm You're not, a, I just think it's fucking funny that Hitch just left you. Hitch yeah, gone, bro. It's bro. crazy, No, he bro. took that $40 per DM for the recruit. And bro, it bounced, bro. It bounced. <laughs> wild, bro. It um, like, man. I'm getting me four burritos. <laughs> right, baby. Hitch hit Poncheros and then went and took a nap for the night. <laughs> um, unreal. Uh, so this He's is funny. So day. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Similar story, you know, further out east than Iowa, obviously. We just had Kanziri on a couple weeks ago. And Kanziri, <laughs> have you heard his story when KF called him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where he just like hung up on the phone, right? <laughs> he said, he said, thanks, but I'm committed to Villanova. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Like, I'm cool with Villanova. Thank bro, you, bro. That's cool. That is wild. That's hilarious to me. Bro. Anyway, um, man, that's, that's crazy. So then, um, so then we, we finished senior year. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's it's time to go to work in the black and gold. Yep. And uh, freshman freshman year, guess who Kevin Ward's roommate is? Wait, before <laughs> 324, that, baby. Yes, sir. Before what? that even, we LaShawn and I trained together all summer, and Kevin too. But, I mean, yeah, I remember wasn't the first there question I better. ever – you said what, Kev? Kluver wasn't there because he didn't want to get better. Yeah. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Kluver wasn't there because they didn't feel like the, having the white long snapper come in in the summer was that important. <laughs> no one said shit to me. That's fair too. Uh, but the very first question I think I ever asked LaShawn, I was like, how many times did you get tackled in high school? I did not believe what my eyes were telling me. This fucking guy that I'm looking at is the same age as me and plays running back. I I was shook to my core. Let's just say this, LaShawn, you would not have been tackled ever in in Iowa. (laughs) (laughs) No, for real, man. You look like Leonard Fournette walking in the door. Like, literally, yeah, this 18 year old kid is like, I'm just like, steroids no <laughs> i mean genetics maybe no this dude's a fucking cyborg there's no other explanation i'm still convinced you're half robot <laughs> for reference everybody that's listening like i came in 230 pounds Fuck. like of I solid in, you know solid steroid. right like looking good like you look good in the like in the uniform walking off the bus everything bro you look right. good now in a sweatshirt <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think i think you were like the poster boy like the dude that they have do like those uh those posters yeah like, yeah 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 that was yeah, you like I did. four years in a row yeah yeah i did do the posters like a lot of those promo <laughs> those things with the schedules yep yeah. that was me that was your boy first team all body first team all biceps yeah facts facts crazy <laughs> anyway so uh so you get put in the dorm with this white kid from illinois what do you think <laughs> uh I had no idea what to think, honestly. <laughs> uh like I was like, okay, all right, you know, he seems cool. Like he didn't seem too weird or anything like that. And he <laughs> and he and he uh he brought he brought all the stuff. So I was like, Oh, this is great. Like, <laughs> like my man my man K Worry bro, like looking out for the boys. Like he got you the cool time, bro, he brought the TV and everything. <laughs> you can guarantee that Kevin's gonna bring all this shit, man. Yeah. Brian, Brian Ford was not gonna let that room be empty and kevin brought it all he brought it yeah. all he didn't bring that mustache but he brought it all i did not bring the mustache man and i would have i would have done a lot better for myself had yeah. a mustache you would have given out so too. many free rides with that mustache <laughs> first, team, first team all body competition kevin first team all yeah. abs with a mustache yeah. Are you serious yeah. <laughs> it would have been a wrap man no press wouldn't have stood a chance <laughs> So anyway, this is, this is good because we got we got the two roommates on the top N three twenty, and we got the two roommates on the bottom N three twenty four. Right? Who was in between us? Meerkat and uh, Meerkat and Reggie. And Reggie. Meerkat and Reggie. That's right. <laughs> oh you know, man! Talk about a wild combination there, bro. Wild that combination. Is ends the <laughs> oh man, that that's so, that still cracks me up to this day. Whenever I think about those two being roommates, unreal. Oh, yeah. Man. Funny. How many times did Reggie get locked out of his room? All the time. It was it was ba- damn near every night, bro. <laughs> I used to swear like every night, like you'd be banging on uh Meerkat's door, like, boom, 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 like, hey, I forgot my key. I forgot my key. Sean, did you hear the story about when I took Reggie's shoes? 
Oh, and he was like flipping out, right? Like going to like because he did something to me. I don't remember what the prank was that he pulled on me, but I'm like, oh yeah, Reggie, you think you're fucking slick? Watch this. And he was a sneakerhead. I snagged them all and I hid them in our closet. <laughs> Bro, they were gone for a second. Like yeah. he was ripping. He had dudes, he was interrogating random <laughs> in his dorm room trying to figure out where his sneakers went from which is that's so funny because like i think about uh i'm um, being on the third floor and like it was like literally just like that corner of us yep. like football players and like everyone else just like regular regular just mm-hmm. students bro so that cracks me up just thinking about him just going door to door like hey <laughs> and like these kids are probably just like dude like what the fuck like i, I didn't do anything i didn't though. do anything dude. <laughs> yeah there was like dude that's insane and of course, Reggie, like Reggie wasn't no uh, little guy either freshman year. No, he no, was, no, not he was at all. College ready body wise. There was only 12 guys up on, up on the third floor. It was, it went you two, Reggie and Meerkat, me and Drake, uh, Boone and Boss, Boone and Boss, yep. Bo and Corbin. And then across Corbin. the wall was Gaffy and, uh, uh, what was, Who was Gaffy's roommate? Um, it was a oh god, lineman Odell, Odell, Tanner oh, Odell. Well, oh. oh, you're forgetting about uh, oh, can't forget about Manders. Joyce, the biggest there was, oh, oh, Joyce oh, oh, and Manders. We had, we had yep. Andrew Wellick, Justin Joyce, Steve Manders, and Dick Pryor. Yes, <laughs> but that was that was third floor. Everybody else yeah. was on the second floor, man. Did yeah. you love your time in the dorms, LaShawn? Because we talked about it. We loved ours. Bro, great time, bro. Great time in the dorms, man. Like, the dorms are fun, man. Like, if anyone think like, listening and you guys are, like, com- uh, considering, like, commuting from home or anything, don't do it. Go stay in the dorms. It's a Absolutely. great experience. You meet a lot of people, have a lot of great times. <laughs> you have a lot, <laughs> you of, a lot of weird people. Times. Yeah, a lot of interesting times, man. We're, you have stories to tell, like, for Ever, forever. Forever. You got yeah, man, like we used to just sit in the hallways, like on because, like we we wouldn't travel on Friday nights because us three were we were walk-ons and we sucked. Uh, <laughs> so Friday nights before like away games, like you were gone, but like whoa, we were really just like whoa, 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 whoa. Shit, I was dude, on the tri- I was on the trip with did travel, which is <laughs> bullshit. By the way, we need to absolutely act as if he he didn't travel. But on Go the on home you. on the home games on the home games, my place was known. I was gonna be at the stadium regardless, so no need for me at the hotel in the home games that year. So. <laughs> regardless, like we would just we would just chill in the hallways and like just kind of people watching people that would just walk by. It was incredible. <laughs> yeah. How badass did it feel to be one of the freshmen who was actually going to play? Like, you came from playing high school ball, boom, to immediately you're going to carry the ball sometimes in, like, can it? Oh, I mean, it was pretty sick. Like, you know, you coming in, like, fall camp is, like, a grind, right? Like, you come in, like, you have, like, you have no idea what to expect. Like, 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 you think, like, you think you, <laughs> you going through, like, your two days in high school, like, like, it's tough. I like, oh man, do we used to two days, we get hitting every single every single time of practice, this and that. Like, right, calls calls gonna be easy, right? Like it's gonna like it's gonna be smooth, smooth sailing. Okay, you go through camp, totally different type of grind, right? Psych. Like, and, and and that adjustment period to like dealing with that speed of like like guys that are gonna be like like that were probably some of the fastest guys on their high school team and now you're coming to to college, like like it's different, right? And really like the first time, like, I felt like I had a chance that I was like, okay, I'm going to be able to play. It's like we were doing, like, a temple period in the indoor. And, like, uh, like I already know. threw me with know. the twos. Threw me with the twos, right? And, like, it's like an inside zone play or whatever. We run it. Like, Nico Law, like, comes down, like, try to oh. hit me, right? Uh, Literally just, like, run right through him. Run right through him, bro. Okay. And, like, Get up high, bro. Remember. Like, call, call the whole disturbance in practice. Call the whole disturbance in practice. Like, because we were doing the temple <laughs> Dude, period. Dude, the entire, the entire <laughs> offense was out on the field. Yeah, whole Honestly, offense out on the field. Half, like, I'm talking about the people. Half the defense <laughs> fucking loved it, too. <laughs> <laughs> like, we going crazy, man. Like, KF and uh, Coach Davis just start going off. Like, about how, like, like we're doing a temple period. We got guys running off and on the field, this and that, blah, 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 blah. And, like, in my head, I'm just like, Dude, I just ran over like like uh, the junior safety, like one of the junior safeties. Like Nico I'm lost, feeling, huh? Like I'm feeling Nico good. <laughs> like literally, literally didn't even think about that. And oh, you know, 
and then really just like you know just try to stay consistent throughout the rest of fall camp and then like it gets to like a week and a half before the NIU game and coach White's like yeah so you know we're not registering you so you got to quit bullshitting and practice this and that I'm like wow damn like so like I'm doing like a pretty good job <laughs> like, and then um, you know I was bullshitting hey, I'm sorry yeah, coach. Hey, right. coach White has made us all feel a little smaller at one point. Yeah. <laughs> we don't say that many kind words about that. Kind of podcast, to be honest. I'll say this. I think Coach White is a good coach for the NFL. For the NFL, I think he could be. He, he's oh, for sure. College. Um, I think he. I think he. And some guy. It's. It's all right. It's all right, Chris. Um, he just didn't connect to players like somebody like uh i don't know like brian does brian something. yeah something yeah. like that um but i mean he knew it he knew his shit it yeah did. definitely knew his stuff but uh so, so he tells you that and in your head you're like okay all right yeah i'm like okay all right like i like i felt bad but like so good i'm like bro he basically said i'm playing like like he's good now <laughs> I'm, like i'm, I'm playing. like i'm like i'm playing like like we out here like i'm not getting the rest <laughs> or nothing like we're good <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, like it's time to become a superstar like so I will I will share a story about uh, our freshman year. Um, so freshman year during the season, all the freshmen lifted three times a week. Yep. It was like Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, or something like that. Yep. Um, and it, regardless if you were playing, regardless if you were registered or not, like all the freshmen lifted three days a week. Except for that motherfucker right here. <laughs> so, yeah, so, the two-day lift so, car. <laughs> him and all the other veterans lifted like Tuesday, Wednesday, or I don't yep. know. I don't forget what the days were. So like first game week comes around, Monday morning, five o'clock our alarm goes off. I'm like, uh LaShawn's still still asleep, so I'll, I'll I'll snooze it. Hits it again. LaShawn still sleeps, so I'll snooze it. Hits it again. <laughs> LaShawn still sleeps, so I'll snooze it. It's like hits it again. It's like yeah, you know, Sean, you think we should go? Yeah, he's like, nah, man, I'm not listening. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, oh, fuck. I sprint. I literally, I literally sprint from Hillcrest to the to the complex, and I'm I'm literally like putting my shirt on as I'm walking into the indoor and make it like just in time for roll call. Wow. <laughs> That is hilarious. That is so funny because I do remember that because that is hilarious, man. They they <laughs> straight like, up. Bro, what, Doyle looked at LaShawn and he said, you're good. We're good. <laughs> yeah, we good. <laughs> what, do you, what do you want me to do with this? He's already the finished statue of Michael. Andrew. I can't do anything with this. <laughs> Man. Uh, fuck, where was I going to go with that? Um, I don't know. You, you definitely, you ever, you ever sit your dad, your dad down and say, Hey, thanks for the genetics. And mom. Got to yeah. That. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, yes and no, because, like in my head, I'd be like, I mean, I, like I'm only five eleven. Like I feel like true, it'd be like true, like six two at least, six two at least. James um, got James got a little bit of the height, a little bit. Is it yeah, true that Ellis yeah. is still gonna be the beast? Is he still on track? Yeah, he yeah he's huge, bro. I, like, if he was here right now, like I like I would show you guys him. Like he's absolutely massive. Your youngest brother, right? Yeah, bro. My my family, old. my my mom when she used to come, I, I, she used to come to the dorm at some point. And I think your family was there at some point too. And like your brother was playing like on on his DS, uh, yeah, it sounds right, yep, or something like that. And my mom for a fucking week would not <laughs> stop talking about how cute she thought your brother was at the time, your youngest. Brother. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I mean, he's fucking. I get it, like, and he was he was already big at the time, like mm-hmm. he's the biggest of you three, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I, he's way bigger than we were at his age, like, and it's not even close. That's not. Uh, didn't all. didn't your mom think he was like uh, like five years younger than he actually was, or older than he actually was, or something like that? So, my oh yeah, my mom asked like, it what like what grade he was in, like in high school or, or middle school, <laughs> whatever. And I was like, I don't think he's that old, mom. I, I think he's just like I think the genetics run strong in that family, and uh, yeah. and they sure do. Um, talk about your first year. Uh, 2013, kind of yeah. how it went, how you um, felt about it at the end, you know, like, uh, it was, it was a good year, man. It was, it was, we had a lot of yeah. great leadership on, on that team. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. So, 
so so first week like so yeah coach white tells me i'm not red shirt and whatever and the niu game comes comes up so i'm like okay so i'm thinking i'm gonna get like a few snaps in whatever like the game goes through and like obviously like the game is close like a lot closer than like what the staff expected what the players expected yeah. right like i mean they, i mean that was a good team that was a good that was a good football team and i used real good so that like, i didn't even get in snap in that game um so like after that game i kind of upset like obviously i'm i definitely pissed like we lost i'm like if i'm extra pissed like I, dude, I didn't even get a play like i didn't even get a chance to even like help us out at all or anything like that mm-hmm. and then um so i was hell upset about that but then like the next game week comes up and uh, who, who were we playing? I want to say it was a Missouri State. I think, I think we Missouri played, uh, yeah. yeah. Like Northwest Missouri State or something. Yeah, like yeah, that. something like that, right? And so then, like, game's going through. I think it might have been, like, the second quarter. I'm like, oh, sorry, not looking good again already. So uh, then, like, when the drive comes up, Coach White's like, hey, you're going in next drive. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, all right, okay, all right, cool, cool. So first play, <laughs> first play, first play, we go, and we run, like, we run, like, a, like a like play action or something, something where I didn't have to do it, like really do anything to run a fake. Okay, and then the next play they call run play. I'm like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Okay, all right, boom. Don't fall start. Just look at the ball, right? Just don't move till till everybody else moves. Boom, get it, do our thing, and then like it was really kind of just like that for like really the rest of the season. Like played here and there. Might have been like I think most I played in the game might have been like twenty, like three snaps or something like that not enough to get off those yeah 55s. not not enough not <laughs> enough man i was running every sunday i was running them 60s running them 60 shuttles man that's right it was 60s back then oh shit yeah. you're right yeah these boys got it so easy these days man they yeah, yeah, no, yeah they be chilling they dude, no, chilling nowadays. dude you don't even like the, i asked zach the other day if they still do fantastic four and he's like no what? <laughs> That's the worst stretch thing of all time. Stretch they don't do it. It's worse than the conditioning. Holy and it, shit. It, he said a few other things that blew my mind too. And it's just like, now I guess, Ke- Kev, you'll get a kick out of this. Drake too kind of, oh, fuck. Sh- LaShawn, you're a health and human phys major. Yeah. Um, Is that right? Yeah. Okay. That's yeah, yeah, me and LaShawn took a bunch of classes together. Yeah. yeah. Um, yep. I guess like one of their cues now, this is totally off topic, but one of their cues now, cause I've been working out with my brother um, for them to like, Instead of set your core, I don't know if set it's your core. core. Yeah, or like, and they they teach audible exhale. Yeah, it's like yeah. So they started doing really? that when I entered them. So I every them. every time they do a rep, they go, <laughs> and it's like, yeah. really? it's like fuck. So now there's just forty eight Bo Bowers in the weight room. That's all there is. <laughs> <laughs> I've never so for those listening, I'm sorry about this, but when Bo Bauer would hang clean, it sounded just like this. <laughs> and uh, I guess that's the cue now. So a- anyway, um, that whole first year is just like I-, I feel you on that. Just trying to make sure you didn't mess up. Yep. Just make sure you got the play right. Mm. Don't so I got a, I got a question. So you didn't like. You weren't obviously the lead back that year. We had Mark, we had Jordan, we had Debol, um, yeah. and and you you got like what dozen to twenty snaps a game. Do you ever yeah. wish that you you did actually redshirt that year and got a, like a, a full year to contribute like a redshirt senior? Uh, I see. So funny thing about that. So we go to the that next year, right? And um, so we go through spring ball, and we go through fall camp, like kind of through like a little bit, like. It might have been like a weekend of fall camp, and like, Coach White talked to me. He's like, "Yeah, so we actually like been thinking about like redshirting you this year, like, like going like because like that's not that's not something that always happens, but like we are so like so deep in the backfield, mm-hmm. right? So like, obviously we had Mark, we had Debo, we had Jordan, right? And like those like those guys were gonna be the three. Like there was like there is no there's no getting around that. Like, like those guys are gonna be the three. And like it was like yeah, so like thinking about redshirting you this year, um this and that so I'm like oh shit like well that's not you know like <laughs> that's not cool like because like, I, I'm like I want to play um and then fall camp goes through through and like really after that like after I, that like I did perform a lot better like through fall camp like just that little like extra bit I guess of you know motivation you know helping me help me a lot and then so first game goes comes by 2014 literally my first carry goes for a touchdown and I'm like okay all right, we're back. We're in business, boys. Like, <laughs> like, like, okay, we like, we about to be good. We're gonna be good. And then, like, 
that like in that game, like I kind of like messed up my ankle like a little bit, but it was nothing like crazy. And then like for like literally like the next like five ish weeks, like I kind of played like very little, like less, honestly less than I thought. Like I played my freshman year, and like then uh, it gets to a bye week, and like I break my ankle. I broke my ankle, which I'm sure it's you're probably gonna end up touching on this. But uh, so I break my ankle and like now I'm like, wow, like this is almost like a wasted year. Like it's basically yeah. a wasted year. Like like they're talking about like they're gonna register me and now like I break my ankle halfway through the season and now I can't even I can't even like get that register, right? Because like mm-hmm. now like cause the medical register rules were like scuffed and whatnot, like there was no like like it was a lot harder to get it. Like Just medical pressure back then. Right. It was, it was, like, it was like four, three or four games. Anything beyond that, like there's almost no discussion. Yeah, it was like thirty yeah. percent or something, and and they were just such bullshit rules. Yeah, yeah. So, so then that happens, and then I'm like, like man, like this is tough now. Like, like now, like I'm like in a, at a point where I, like, like now a lot of people have known it, like, like because like I still like showed up like every day, like with a smile on my face, this and that, but like, and it's not like I was hurting, like. Yeah. Like I was like, like legit, like struggling. Would you like, say, would you say that at this point, you know, even considering the rest of your career, this is probably the, the hardest time for you personally? Yeah, this was Iowa? hands down the hardest time because like, so this point, so that happens like that bye week before the Northwestern game. Right. Mm-hmm. And then like, cause like going into that, like, cause we were having like run game struggles and whatnot. And like, like that week before that, like coach Rice, like, Hey, we're going to make a lot of changes, like running back wise, like, like the thing about giving you like the, like a lot like much bigger uh shot like opportunity on this team like to provide and whatnot and so like that comes and then when I break my ankle like like I swear like that sent me just like into like almost like a like a depression like legit depression like sure. so I was just down on myself and everything like but like it's obviously tough to like hard not to feel sorry for yourself but like like I mean like this is like your life right mm-hmm. like you play football like, you want to be a star, like, it's, like, it's what you love, right? And so, like, that week, like, Mark plays really well, and then Akron gets his, like, first big shot, right? And, like, we were, like, really the same class, and he goes and rushes for, like, like 110 yards, something like that, and my touchdown, and I'm, like, 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 obviously, like, I'm happy for Ak, and I'm, like, and I'm, like, because, like, that's my boy, and but I'm, like, damn, like, like, that could have been me, right? Like, mm-hmm. like that could have been me, and, like, at this time, like, I'm struggling, and, like, the classes I was taking were hard, like, you know, they said, like, halfway through the semester, like, they send out a little, a little note, like, if you're struggling, like, if you have, like, like a D or an F in the class, like, I get that. I'm like, bro, like, like, I don't know if this, I, like, I'm like, I don't know if this legit can get, like, any worse for me right now. Damn. And so, like, like this was probably, like, like hands down, probably, like, the hardest point in my career. Like, like this was, like, tough, and it was a good thing, like, I had a good uh, support system, you know, a good group of friends, like, the running back room was great you know, uh, you know, guys to help kind of like pick you up like throughout the day and throughout the rest of the season. You, uh, what did you think about when this fucking ugly guy up in the corner walked his way into the running back room? Couldn't have been good, dude. I was, (laughs) (laughs) uh, honestly, I had no idea. Like, I didn't know what to expect. Like, I mean, obviously like we talked, uh, like a decent amount. I mean, yeah, I mean, we, we were like, right down the hall from each other. Yeah, yeah, he talked decent amount, but I was like, I don't know how he's gonna do that fullback. But I was like, so he probably better than he was that linebacker. Linebacker. much worse, right? Has to yeah. be better than that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like, but oh, I was like, shit. okay, like, like, I was like, he definitely, definitely hits hard. Like, but I'm like, dude, if he isn't like get his head up or like get his pads lower he's gonna like fucking kill himself out there playing a fullback like if i see him run the b play one more time and run with his crown into his head he might have to be carrying him off on a stretcher or some shit dude <laughs> we still we're still worried about carrying him out of his house <laughs> so, so that's that's nothing's changed there um, mm-hmm. damn that's funny how'd you how did as you guys progress what'd you feel i guess did Drake block for you much? Because Make and, and Adam were in there. My yeah, my senior yeah, my senior year, it was it was uh, him and Brady. Him and how Brady did you how did you feel about Drake in front of you? Good. Man, At I that felt point, I, I, yeah, I felt I felt protected, man. Okay, okay. Like like Drake, like Drake was my boy, right? Yeah. Question: Were you the one that fell on his ankle and broke it in the Nebraska game? No. Sean was. Well, I, re- I remember. Yes, I remember yes and no. He was too strong for the guy. So I basically, so basically, I get a carry, bro, and like, 
like I literally just like run through this guy and like he just goes like flying. Just goes yeah. flying into Drake's leg. If Bro, Buddy and then, like, Nebraska would have hit the weight room at all, if he would have found a squat rack in his four fucking years, I wouldn't walk <laughs> like Barney Rubble. But as it is, the kid, the kid met LaShawn in the hole and had no prayer, and now I walk with a limp. LaShawn yeah. yeah, yeah. like look back, bro, and I see like his ankle. I was like, I was like, oh Drake, get up, bro. And I see his ankle. I was like, oh shit. Dude, I remember the film. LaShawn, you I, backed away so fast, you're like, oh yeah, I, I remember like, that. come here, come here, you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, bro. I was like, oh hell no, nah. yo, like like this man sh- Angle it was literally dangling off. I was like, "What? This is wild!" Like you guys, like, like that's some shit. Like you see in like, like Grey's Anatomy or something, bro. Like, that's how <laughs> his ankle was, yo. It was crazy. <laughs> ah, yeah, Sean had a first. So like, there was a couple people who had a real first hand glimpse of it it was LaShawn Ike and Boone and both LaShawn and Ike they didn't they didn't take to it too well and Boone's sick ass Boone Myers the sick bastard you can go back to the film Boone just stands there over me just like (laughs) (laughs) staring at it doesn't say anything that no no reaction at all serial killer style (laughs) that's hilarious hilarious. so uh fucking Calvin I, I want to move towards the uh, towards the end so, of our yeah, good part. Move towards the good part where you score all the touchdowns and stuff. Yeah, about yeah. that. So, um, so you end up playing your senior year was twenty sixteen. Yeah. Right. Um, Are we just gonna skip the happiest year of our lives or what? Well, and twenty fifteen. I was just mm-hmm. I was just putting it in perspective. Um, talk about being a, a key part of that twenty fifteen team. Um, yeah, and, and that's then, when that's when you kind of got the reins. It was you and uh, yeah. you and Jordan that year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so y'all heard my story, my background story in 2014. That was a tough time. Um, then, so going in 2015, like, like I had honestly no expect, expectations at this point. Like, like it's two years in the career, like in my career, I haven't made like really any progress, really, like as far as being you know the, the lead back. So we go in the spring. And like you think of all the backs that we had on that that team, that 2015 team. So we had there was me, there was Jordan, there's Akram, there's D. Mitch. Like all of us, like were backs on that that contributed significantly. And then that spring, like I actually like went out and won that won the RB job like outright, right? So like going into the year, like so I'm like okay, so like now I'm like starting to feel like everything kind of changed a little bit, like like for especially in myself, especially confidence in myself. I'm like okay. Now, like, I feel like I can actually play. Like, the coaches actually believe in me at this point. Like, like they've seen, they seen that, you know, that I can actually, you know, help contribute to the team and help carry us to get us a lot of victories. And so we go through that. Uh, I have a little rough patch in the middle of the year there with the high ankle sprain. But then we get to the point where we get to the Minnesota game, right? And we kind of know all – we kind of – we all know the story. We all know how that went down, right? Um I had my career high in yards, 195. You know, we go score three touchdowns and we hey, go 10 LaShawn, for the first time. LaShawn, I would have hmm. loved if he had 194 and one last touchdown. He would have just yeah. taken a year. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, Kevin was this. so mad about that touchdown. No one, no one wanted you to score less than Kevin Ward on that <laughs> But, like, it, it, it was literally something, like, we never – like, we honestly, like, never talked about that. We never – after that time that we put in three new tempos mm-hmm. so that we would never make that mistake again. Yep. Like, literally, because like – yeah, defense was having a rough night that day. Yeah, Bill, even, yeah. Bill Parker was not happy after the end of the oh, game. Man. Defense was not happy. We did not go out that night because, you know, and what does Minnesota do? We kick the ball off to them. They score right away, <laughs> and they have to get the onside kick. I guarantee you, if they get that onside kick, we would have been in fucking trouble. Yeah, bro. I was like, I was like oh, we, shit. We were like, yo. <laughs> like, like, I had tweeted, like, uh, like, cause, like that clip that was posted on Twitter, like, was on Twitter one day, and I was like, yeah, fun fact. Literally the next day in film, like Coach Parker just let me know like how pissed he was and the defense, how pissed they were. Like I went and scored that touchdown. Like, like honestly, like in my mind, I didn't even think about it. I'm like, boom, I made this guy. I killed this dude in the hole. Like, oh. he's taking it to the zone. I'm like, there was, like there was nothing. There was nothing. I don't, there was nothing stopping me. I was like, I'm going to the end zone. Like, there's there's nothing stopping me. Like, I'm scoring regardless. Bro, and and that video just got reposted because of all this Corona shit. They're reposting highlights and stuff. 
Yeah. That the cut you made on the safety was so pretty, dude. It was so pretty. And you just bounced and it was gone. And I was like, every time a touchdown happens, I get to admire it. And then as right as about you score, I'm like, oh, fuck, I have to go do something. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I wasn't even thinking about you going down. I was like, hell yeah, we're going to yeah. win this game. And mm-hmm. then after I snapped the ball, I got off the field and I was like, our defense hasn't been great today. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, yeah, literally all offensive coaches, like, dude, Brian – it's like, I mean, we didn't expect you to, you know, break a run for 50 yards and a touchdown. Like, <laughs> like if we would have known you were going to do that, like, we would have just told you to go down once you got the first or something. Phil, Phil Parker legitimately wanted nothing to do with a touchdown on the offense. Like, he, no. he, he probably still thinks about it to this day. <laughs> Without a that doubt. motherfucker don't forget. <laughs> Without <laughs> a doubt. <laughs> Here, next time I see him, you'll probably bring that up. <laughs> I bet. I bet, dude. Uh, it, was, it was all right, man. Kinnick was rocking for another two minutes, so he gave him that until they started shitting. Yeah, they, I, they legitimately did the IOWA and think until Minnesota scored again. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. man, that was uh, – that's one of the better games we played, man. It really is. Um, mm-hmm. What's your favorite? What are some of your most memorable ones? Obviously, that one's up there. That's without a doubt. Um, uh, Michigan, obviously. Oh, um, Nebraska 2012, even though I didn't play that, I mean 2012, 2015, even though I didn't play that much, like still just the fact like us going 12 and 0, like that was obviously huge. Yeah, but also how fucking cold was that game? Freezing. Dude. You know, it was un, like unreasonably cold. <laughs> like really when I went out to go out like warm, like before the game, I'm like, bro, we got to It doesn't even this. make sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, I would cancel that game for weather purposes faster than I would not play in a coronavirus pandemic. <laughs> 100%. Dude, if they if they told me that I could either play another football game in Yankee Stadium on that turf in the cold or get coronavirus, I'm taking coronavirus. If they wow. told me that every single person in Nebraska Stadium had coronavirus or that we and it was 75 degrees or it was as cold as it was during that game, and everybody was healthy. I'm taking the coronavirus. <laughs> it was it was so cold that game. It it didn't make no sense. No sense. Um, that's fun to hear about some of your favorite memories. I want I want to know your thoughts a little bit. So you graduate, and mm-hmm. and your guys who all got the red shirt get to play one more year, and get to stomp out the Ohio dude. State Buckeyes. Oh, uh, dude, I'm honestly so pissed. Like. Like, I was happy, but I was pissed at the same time. I was like, dude, I only got to play Ohio State one time, and I didn't really play. I played, like, I played like eight snaps. That was, like, my freshman year. Yep. Like, eight snaps. And, right, so, like, I didn't really, like, get the full experience of it to actually, you know, play the whole game and, like, actually go head-to-head. And so, like, 2015, like, I was hoping, like, when Michigan State beat Ohio State that year, uh, I, was, I was so pissed because I was like, dude. <laughs> like, I was like, I was like, that's my chance. That was my chance right there. Like, and then just went poof. Um, but, yeah, so I see everyone – Get and I like I went to that game because like this at this point in time like I think I was in between rosters I think I was in between the Chargers and the Redskins and so like I had a free weekend and so like my family and everyone was coming up obviously and so I was like dude I'm going not solid doubt I'm going to this game. without a doubt <laughs> <laughs> first play first play mine to get that pick six and I'm like oh we gone like <laughs> like it's gonna be a slaughter like, yeah. like they like they like they battled a little bit but I'm like nah bro they, like we not losing the way the stadium was rocking that night I was like without a doubt like. This is like this is gonna be a great time, and I was I, I was so jealous of y'all that y'all got to play in that. Did you go out afterwards. You had to. Have. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. It was Bro, one of the wildest man. nights. Of wild. You <laughs> the Ohio State. It was wild. Have you? I think I still think the Michigan night we went a little harder. I, I don't know. Little... <sighs> okay, so honestly, we might have. We might have. I. So that Michigan which, night was so, really like a movie. So the Michigan night Michigan was... night, man. Michigan night. K. I sent out the text saying curfews extended to two a.m. Have a good night. He did. He did which, say which, that. Night, which night was the uh, the daylight savings? Because uh, one of those crazy night outs or nights. I don't out, know. They're both. They're both November. So they would. Yeah. Around the same yeah night. Both November. I I gotta say this. Both of those games. I you know me and Lashawn we talked about it. We're married. Married. Ma- you know your wedding day is a good day. You know, mm-hmm. but brother, 
when Dude. you rush the field and you beat a top five team in Kinnick. Oh my goodness. Uh oh, don't say it, Kluber. Dude. Oops. It ta- it's a it's a it, on a different level. On a different level, it's it, you can't really compare it, but it's the happiest you could ever be. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> So here's like, a funny story. LaShawn, you'll appreciate this because you saw my ankle up close and personal. After we beat Ohio State, I went into the stands and just stood there. I just like – because I almost made it back to the tunnel. I'm like, wait, I don't really want to go back to the locker room yet. So I just went and stood out there or in the yeah. stands. As I'm leaving the field afterwards, I jump over the thing. I see a person on a stretcher with their leg looking identical to mine, dude. Somebody <laughs> tried to you jump what? the fence. Onto oh my the god! Of the foot <laughs> and they break their shit completely, dude. Oh, and on the way oh by, my god! <laughs> on the way by, dude, cross my heart, no cap. I looked at him and I just laughed. I'm like, been there, and I just. Like, oh my <laughs> god! Oh my <laughs> god! <That's fucking> wow! <laughs> wow! Unbelievable. Oh, a lot of good times in Kinnick, a lot of good times in Iowa City. Any others that come to your mind, not necessarily on the field, but uh, just being in Iowa City during those four years? And um, Yeah, man. Uh, I don't know, just being around the guys, man. I mean, that's just – that's honestly, like, that's one of the things that, that I miss the most. And I guarantee you, like, mostly everyone that's played at a high level like that, even guys that have played in high school, like, they miss, like, being around the guys like that, like, being able to clown around all the time and, you know, That's just joke. Podcast, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, yeah, literally just joke around, you know, mess around. Like, that's those are one, those are the times that you miss. And, like, obviously those good moments on the field are great. Like, um, obviously in 2016, we didn't have a good year as we would have liked. But, I mean, as far as in the running back room, like, for the most part, like, we were doing a damn good job, right? Like, we had me and Ack uh, rush for over 1,000 yards each. And, you know, like, fullbacks blocking, blocking their asses off, like, like we were having a pretty good, pretty good time solidly in the RV room. And, you know, there's times like that where you're making big plays and, you know, you're enjoying it with the guys. Like, there's not like there's not much things that truly get better than that. Exactly. Uh, coming coming from my perspective, too, like, having 2,000-yard running backs was insane. It that just was, it mm-hmm. felt so cool because there was so much to celebrate. Yeah. Um, so you graduate and uh, you, you do the whole pro day thing. Um. Mm-hmm which unfortunately the guys are getting screwed out of this year. Just yeah, in, in, insanity. Um, you trained with Doyle or you trained with Doyle, right? Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, pro day comes around. Talk a little bit about your post career. You know, you've mentioned a couple of the teams that you were with, but talk mm-hmm. about your NFL career and your opportunities there. Um, to, yeah. To kind of bring you up to that point that we mentioned earlier, where you've got the, you know, you've got the, the baby and the family now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, pro day went well. You know, I ran fast, um, 40, uh, did well on the jumps and, you know, my agility testing. Um, and then draft day comes. Uh, I felt like I was going to get drafted. Like, like I, I was in contact with, like, a pretty decent amount of teams. But then, you know, the draft goes through, goes by, and I don't get drafted. Um, a couple of teams end up calling, you know, me and my agent about, you know, signing me as a draft free agent and end up ultimately choosing uh, New England, which was, which was a which was a great time, by the way. Which I mean, people are probably shocked to hear that. But like, obviously, like coming from Iowa, like the programs are very similar, where they're very strict and they kind of have like an expectation of whoever, whether you are the, you know, at the time like you're Tom Brady on the roster, right, or you're the 90th guy on the roster, right. Like everyone has an expectation, like, of you know, getting better each day and performing on their role. And um, so, like, that was a great time um, just being around that type of environment, right? That was a championship environment. You know, they, those guys have built uh, an organization where they've won, was that, was that six yeah. over the past? Was six. that Yeah. 20 years. 20 years, yeah. Over 20 years, which is, I was just insane. Like, and you, and you see why. Like, you see how their programs run, and you see, like, people that are there, like, they buy into the program. Literally, everyone does it regardless regardless of their background, whether they were a first round pick or they were undrafted or they're even a trial guy, like, like everyone buys into the, that program and you kind of understand like, okay, so this is what I, kind of what it takes to be great. And so I like, I learned a lot from them and kind of just, you know, continue to carry that, 
um, what, uh, from those teachings that I learned from Iowa and New England and kind of carried it through. Um, and yet, it's, so my NFL career has been short, a, a lot shorter than I, I would have liked it to be. But I mean, I've learned a lot of things, learned a lot of football, um, you know, bounced around. I've been on that grind of being in practice squads and going to active rosters or, you know, going to workouts and whatnot. And it's a different type of grind. And, uh, you know, the fact of all the adversity that I went through at Iowa definitely helped me, like, through that time period and, you know, being able to, you know, push through and not give up, right? So, like, yep. it, like, because if I give up, like, how can I tell someone else, like, you know, you got to push through and something, like, when, when you know, I didn't even pull, uh, pull through on myself. So. Yeah, that's a good point. That's, I mean, that's, you said it well right there. Um, before we get to any last words, I want to know quick what, what it's like to – walk around a complex with Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. What's that? Yeah, like? I was going to say, what was it like to be in the midst of greatness? Uh, it's intimidating at first. Like, like, I mean, like he, like, because you obviously you know who these guys are. Like there's no, there's no getting around it. Like these guys are, they're, they're the, the guys. Everyone wants to be them. Like you, like all the program, like all organizations in the NFL, like if they could trade their last 20 years and take the Patriots last 20 years, every single one of them would do it in a heartbeat. Right. right? And, so like literally like the first day like you get there like and you're with the vets um like Tom like Tom Brady's actually like not as uh, uh like an asshole as like you know people would think he would be like he like first day first day literally walks up he's like hey hello my name's Tom like uh, and I'm like I, I, no shit, shit. <laughs> like like no shit like I like, obviously I know that and like you know you introduce yourself and whatnot but like these guys like like they expect like they expect the best like. Uh, you know, like Tom Brady, like he did, like at the time, like that year I was there, like he did all the workouts, like he did all the conditionings and all this stuff, like didn't do no, like no special treatment or anything Damn. like that. Like just treated him just like everybody else. And, and it's, and it's just crazy to think about. Cause like a lot of people probably just think like, oh, he probably does his own thing. Like, and he like, probably just has like free reign, but like, like even he's like, like he was part of Patriot way. That's big, that's what they call it. Right. The Patriot way where you know, everyone just buys into the program and, uh, Coach Belichick just commands so much respect from like everyone on the staff and you know around the literally around the the league and even other professions like because they know how he goes about his business and how he does things and how he gets you know everyone to kind of follow his lead and so it was it was great to actually you know learn under that and see like what it takes to be great uh, whether you're doing football or whether you're running any other type of business or anything like that. Do you notice that the Patriots rosters were a lot like Iowa rosters? Just like the Patriots team is put together a whole lot the same. Yeah. So I think that like you have what they're doing. Yeah. Like you have like your top, like you have your talented, talented guys, right? But then you got guys on there like who you may have never even heard of. Like like you might like they were like at some small school, right? And they're at some like undrafted, undrafted guy that, you know, making plays in the AFC championship or Super Bowl, right? Like, like Kevin like, Ward's at the NFL. You take yeah. Julian Edelman and make him a Super Bowl MVP, like, since yeah. when? I mean, yeah, how I mean, he was seventh-round draft pick. He played quarterback at Kent State. And, you know, next thing you know, he becomes a receiver, he becomes a Super Bowl MVP. And then you got guys like like Malcolm Butler, who went to a small school in Alabama, um, was like a tryout guy for the pack. And the next thing you know, he makes the one of the, the biggest plays in the Super Bowl to ever happen, right, that goal line interception. Like it's just it's Seahawks are very similar. True. <laughs> they should have run the ball Marshawn's without a doubt. Salty. With, without a doubt. Um, yeah, and it, like I was just very similar to that. Like you got guys who might have been, you know, two star recruits or just no star recruits, right? That come in and you know they yeah I, I respect <laughs> it yeah 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 like they like they like they work like they work hard you know and then they when their time comes uh, you know they go and make the most out of it so. Heart don't have stars, LaShawn. We're making merch. Facts. I love that. I love that. <laughs> um, you were – I didn't know how this was going to go. We, we bring our former teammates on here. LaShawn, you were always kind of a quiet guy. Didn't say a whole lot. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how this interview was going to turn out. You were fucking fantastic, man. Yeah, you appreciate that. Appreciate we that, we love having you on. You're welcome anytime. And we got to get the, the LaShawn and JD combo, dude. I just, dude. I've been with you two together too many times to not have to do it on the podcast. We'll get it. We'll get it. I got some great, I got some great stories we can tell. Ah, uh, yeah, so. absolutely. 
Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Drake, Kevin, any other questions before we let LaShawn go? No, nah, man, we'll get him back again and cover up anything that we, uh, we didn't get to. So, right. so. LaShawn, it's fun having you on, man. N324 for life, baby. Back. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, for N324 and N320 uh, and Kevin's chicken lips that are in the fridge. Um, and that- just, just to put it out there, you know, I like to talk about fighting a lot. N324 would have won the fight. Oh, wow. yeah, oh, for Drake sure. Admitting, without a doubt. With, Drake without admitting a doubt. he'd lose a fight. Holy it's we would have got, got throttled. It's we tough. Got... It's tough when at that point it was two on one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right now, though, right now, I think it'd be interesting. I, I think we have a slightly better chance, but I think we still might get fucked up. because Dude, like we're, we're like in different weight classes now, though. I know. Like well, Drake's yeah. skinny as fuck now, too. True. LaShawn, what do you weigh before we go? What do you weigh right now? 220 right now. 220 okay. right now, so I, I can still play. Uh, like, exactly yeah, weight class. So he would embarrass <laughs> me, and I wouldn't have anything that I would like. You know, I wouldn't have anything to fall back on. Bro, I'm uh-huh. I'm 186. And you like Mirko? Oh, here. you on the shake list? I'm I'm yeah. double shake list. 4 a.m. Doyle and Mirko <laughs> together. Yep, yep. <laughs> Man, it it was so fun to have you on again. You can come on anytime. Um, and when we get your they brother, play, you, well, if the 2020 season happens, they're supposed to play Ohio State. So if that game happens, we got to get like a pre Ohio State pod with you and JD. Absolutely. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Absolutely. Um, that was episode 105. We're on our way to 200 now. Fuck 100. Chad was great. We'll bring him back for episode 200, but we're on our way to 200 now. Um, as long as Corona doesn't turn this entire place into uh, Badlands. Um, and that's it. Corona Chronicles, LaShawn Daniels. Yep. Um, one, of the, one of the better friends that we had during our time and one of the better running backs in Iowa history. Great human being. Great human. Um, good luck Appreciate with everything that. you're doing, LaShawn. Good luck mm-hmm. with, the, with the fam. Tell them hi. And, uh, and have a good one, man. Yeah, y'all too. Thank you. Heart don't have Go stars. Walk-ons out.